Good morning to all my dear friends there. Sorry that we have to be cut off and so far away from one another. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this is up, up close. I don't have to walk down the aisle to see you or you have to strain your eyes. I do hope that you're all safe. Some at home, some in the office, wherever you are, uh, that you are safe. Can we begin with a prayer this morning? Let us begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We recall that the Lord said he is with us always. And we desire to be with him. So let us pray and ask him to be present to us, especially for this time of prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the one who gives to us ultimately the peace we desire. Bless us today gathered that we may hear and understand your spirit working in our lives. Bless each and every one of us, those near and those far, those with whom we work each day. Bless each and every one of us. We pray in the name of Jesus, your name. And we pray always in the power of the Holy Spirit to God, our Father, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So uh, we want to talk today a little about getting along in difficult times. And these are difficult times. These are difficult times. It, it's depressing at times when I look at the news, the national news of the people still not getting vaccinated or so sick that the hospitals are full. I talk to my friends in Dabao and Zamboanga in the south, a number of places where they still don't have enough vaccine for all the people and where they're not able to control and yet people want to get things done, want to get a world better. I watched on television, as you may have watched too, the situation in Afghanistan where the Taliban have taken over again and how people are afraid, some are optimistic. Everyone talks with the spirit, perhaps we can get through with this. Can we be strong enough to get through with this? And that's difficult. The people of Myanmar who have suffered a military takeover a couple of months ago, how do they handle it? What is in the human spirit that keeps them going? Resilience. What is a strength? What is that inner strength that helps us? I'd like to suggest today that a real part of that for Christians and believers is our faith. I was thinking the other day, I was having mass for a person who had died. And the first reading, uh, the gospel reading, was from the gospel of St. John, chapter 14. And uh, the scene takes place at the Last Supper. Everyone is a little agitated. They know something is going to happen. They're aware of that. They're afraid. And Jesus speaks to them. And what does he say? Very interesting. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. I repeat that often to myself. Faith in God, faith in Jesus. Don't let your hearts be troubled. It doesn't say there won't be suffering or pain or separation like that. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. In that particular story, he continues to say that when we die, we will go to the Father's house, to his Father's house. So it's not a case of you just die and you decay. There's a promise there that we will have life after life in the house of the Father. 
So that resilience uh, goes on. I, I don't know about in your family. Can you think of moments when things are so tough and yet people hung on? Many years ago, uh, when I was still in Zamwanga, there was a terrible fire across from the university. And people came into the university and were using the grade school, filled with people and children, the few possessions, everything burned down. The area, it's not a squatter's area, it was basically poor people who had simple wooden houses. Every house burned down, it was flat. They lost everything. And yet after a while, slowly rebuilt. I think the first reason they were able to rebuild was that they were welcome at the Ateneo in Zamwanga. People came right away to us, they brought rice, they brought vegetables, they brought drinks, water. People came, we didn't even have to call people. People came on their own to give us things to give to the people who have been run out. So the resilience was made strong because people help those who were in trouble. The resilience was made strong because people reached out and helped them. I, I feel the same right now. Uh, although I, I'm in a safe place, I'm in a seminary, I just realize each day I have to pray, as we do at Holy Mass, to pray each day for all those suffering because of COVID-19. I think of our desire to help everyone as best we can. But we know that we can't. We know that there are weaknesses. We're not there all the time. But the Lord gives us strength. The Lord gives us strength. I know the story of Jonah, uh, not Jonah, the Job of the Old Testament. Job lost everything. He lost his wife, his children, his lands, his cattle, everything. And the evil spirit came to try to tempt him away from God. And uh, Jonah had a very, uh, Job had a very interesting comment. He said, Naked I was born, and naked I shall leave the earth. That was it. He knew that possessions meant nothing at all. Ultimately, it was his trust in God that made the difference. Naked was I born, naked will I leave this earth. So the question is, how about resilience? How, how does resilience work out? Well, I'll be honest. Resilience does not stand alone. What makes for resilience is that people take care of others. The resilience of many poor families in the country is made strong and helped because of things like the community kitchens, because of groups like Tangi Nyama, groups that have food for others. There are people who help people who have nothing. If you're a worker in a small shop somewhere in Manila, or Quezon City, or Hatipolo, and the shop closes down, you have nothing. The owner of the shop has nothing. Can you hold on? Everyone wants to hold on, but can you hold on? And then this is where resilience is made strong by people taking care of other people. People who bring food to a community pantry so that people who need food may take it from the community pantry. I would guess that, that no one among the group I'm talking to now, none of you, 
if the company is in that level. But how are you at the level that you take care of others? Are you sharing in one way or another with others? For some of you, perhaps you do. You give a donation of cash or maybe some canned food or some vegetables at a community kitchen or any place where there's a feeding program, by the way. I know that parishes, some schools, some organizations have feeding programs. Once a day, people go there to get a bowl of vegetables and some soup. Sometimes there's a little fish or some chicken too. But they go there for their one meal a day. Will it last? How long will it last? Well, it might have to last a long time. For those of you who would talk to your grandparents, maybe even your parents, the resilience of the people during the Second World War when there was nothing, there was nothing. The Japanese had taken over everything. But if you were in the province where you could move around a little more easily, you could get things. But in the big cities, it was very hard. But holding on, Holding on. And that holding on has much to do with faith, much to do with believing. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. Resilience can also have a, a way of helping us accept pain suffering because there's a greater goal involved. I remember my father working overtime to get more money to the family because we really weren't rich, we weren't dirt poor, but we had a hard time. There were many evenings when all we had was soup. There was nothing else. But the point is, the resilience was such that my dad, because he loved us, was willing to go out of his way, give extra effort, which must have been hard for him to take care of us children and my mom. So that resilience sometimes is lived out in order to better reach out to others. So the resilience of my dad working over time to earn a little more cash so we could buy the food, the shoes, the clothes that we needed. That was a resilience. He was not put down by the situation. His main job was what do I do to help the situation improve? That, that's resilience. Not just accepting, but resilience has a component that talks about being positive, acting toward, helping out perhaps others, especially if we were even well-blessed ourselves. I think about these days, I just do feel so bad for so many who have been caught by COVID with sickness and all its expenses or death. When I say trust in the Lord, I have to do that. I recall many years ago when my mother died and then many years later my father. I was here in the Philippines. It was not easy to go back and forth in those days. You couldn't just get on a plane and be in New York in 14 hours. And I spoke to my sister. Oh, sis, how is it there? What can I do? She said, don't worry, Bill. We're taking care of everything. We will be all right. That gave me a, a spirit of resilience. I was able to bounce back because someone else was taking care of me. That's the same for you, for me. 
we, we bounce back because people take care of us, because we believe in God. The faith act is very, very, very important. I believe that the Lord takes care of me. I don't know if you've thought about that very much. Resilience isn't just fighting it hard. I would want to think that for Christian life, resilience means to move beyond who we are and where we are. I think of Jesus and resilience. And I think of the night of the passion, the scourging, the crowning of thorns, the carrying of the cross, the death of Jesus on the cross. And even at that moment, in that most difficult of all moments when he himself was physically suffering, his first thought was, Father, forgive him. That was his resilience. Even in the most difficult of moments, his first thought was, Father, forgive him. That's a kind of resilience. It's a resilience based on faith, a resilience based upon love of God, a resilience based upon trust in others. Can you do that? Can you have a kind of resilience? Can you bounce back, to, as they say, in a difficult moment? Resilience, I could give you a good example, is when someone hurts you, causes difficulty for you, can you still pray for them? If someone hurts you, causes difficulty, speaks badly about you, maybe, can you still pray for them? That's a kind of resilience. That is a way of bouncing back from the sad part of what had happened. So resilience is a, an inner call within us to come back, to rely upon the Lord. We trust in him and therefore we can come back. It's not all over, it's not finished. And of course, as I said from the very beginning, for us Catholics, Christians, for anyone who believes, resilience is God's work in our lives. And I believe that. I, I think of that. As I move on in years, I see, hmm, how will it be? And I have to say, I, I pray that I may do whatever the Lord asks of me, that I may be resilient, not put down or ultimately depressed. Now, by the way, depression is a real thing. If you're a father with children and you can't get the food, that's terribly depressing. If you're a mother with a child who has a, a bad and serious fever, that's depressing doesn't mean there's no depression, but it does mean that we want to bring things forward. We want to bring things back. That's what we desire, that resilience of spirit. I've seen it in the farmers. If you go to Biko, where they have so many typhoons, what is it to be a Farmer in Bikol, you plant a crop and you see it washed away in a very heavy rain or typhoon. And then you go out and you plant again. You don't go out laughing and saying, this is a lot of fun. But you're resilient enough to say, I will not let this defeat me. I will not let this put me down so I can't move anymore. Resilience is, is part of that. Not to be defeated by circumstances. The circumstances happen, like COVID. 
It's obvious and up to the moment we cannot stop it. We can minimize it with vaccines. We can minimize it wearing face masks and keeping social distance, washing our hands. But it's there. Can we still bounce back? The other day I spoke to a friend in New York. New York was very, very badly hit by the virus. Very badly hit, the whole USA. And they just held on. They took their medicine, they tried to be careful, and now they're pretty much back to normal. The restaurants are active, the people are on the street, people are going to work. They're careful, more careful, because of the Delta variant, we know about that. But the resilience is there, they bounce back. Nature bounces back too, you know. We see the hot season and the leaves fall from trees and the grass turns brown and the ground gets hard. And then Mother Nature, the resilience comes. The rains come. Slowly the soil softens. The grass begins to grow. The trees come back again. The fire trees light up again. So nature shows us resilience. Now, of course, the question is, are you a person of resilience? Are you a, do you bounce back or do you just lie like you're dead? And I'm going to add the other part, do you help others bounce back? Who are the ones you talk to that you pick them up when they're down? Help them to be resilient, to come back to life again. Are you a person like that? Do you pick people up? Or do you put people down? I think one thing that makes people resilient is the fact that they do it together. They're able to work it out together. I read a very interesting article about a situation in Pasai City. This was an article in the Inquirer just two days ago. A very poor slum area, super poor, living in a big apartment, old one, terribly jammed up, small, no CRs, awful. And some people began to talk, can we do something together? And working among themselves with some private groups, helping them with ideas, then getting the government involved and getting, they rebuilt their whole community. So that everyone had their own decent apartment. They had their own CR, they had their own cooking area. They had gone from abject poverty and low life to something better. They're not rich, no one there is rich, but they're resilient. They wanted to come back and they came back. How about you? How about friends in your family who need to be picked up? Whose resilient spirit might be rather low. Can you be the one to pick them up? So resilience isn't just accepting what happens. For me, true resilience has to do with being able to reach out beyond ourselves, beyond our own situation. I would want to think for Christians, resilience is not only feeding myself, but as possible to feed my neighbor. It's not only to take care of myself, but to take care of my neighbor. So resilience is a kind of a spirit that says, in spite of it all, I will hold on. But for Christians, for us believers, it also has to do with taking care so not just holding on, but taking care. How about that? Where are you in the spectrum? Most of you have jobs. So you're, you're fairly secure. But there are many other people who don't. And yet who hold on. 
I get a call once in a while, Father Bill, could you send us a little help? Okay. They're out there. One man I know, he and his wife, they go out by the big malls to sell bananas and to sell face masks. Now the trouble is that if he doesn't sell a banana, it rottens and he can't sell it the next day. The face mask is okay all the time. But they're resilient enough not to give up. If I would give them some money, part of it they would use right away to buy more face masks to go out and to sell again at the mall. Pretty good. That's a resilience. So I, I'm part of their resilience. I give a little to help them and they help themselves. I don't know how to work that out in a practical level, but I'd like to suggest that. Think about that for yourself. What do I do to help people be resilient? What do I do to help pick people up? I will tell you first level for me is to pray for them, to pray for healing, to pray that people get the vaccine, to pray that people will have the care they need. I pray that way. And you pray the same. Do you want to pray the same? I do. I would like to ask the same. Do you do the same? No person you. Pray about feelings nothing and we take care of others. We who are blessed with work, with regular pay, well, like myself living in a seminary, everything is taken care of. Can I take care of others? I'd like to offer that as a thought. Okay, can I take care of others? I'd like to end our little talk today uh, by just a few, a picture and words and a picture. It's a little far, but it has to do with how we live. How we live. It has a bit to do with this whole idea of resilience like that. So on the screen now, you see a picture. You recognize the scene. It's the baptism of Jesus at the River Jordan. And you can see the light coming down upon him. And you, you remember the story that the spirit comes and the word said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that coming of the spirit which tells us how to live our lives, guides us how to live our lives, shows up in the way we live our lives today. And uh, St. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, puts forward some things. He said, here are some indications that you're people who take care of others, that you're people who live as not as me here, me here, but you live to some degree as community. We, we cannot all do that. I am in the seminary far from the very poor. And so I have to pray for them, make a sacrifice for them, and share gifts with them. I have to do that. But the whole point is that I want to live in community. I want to take care of others. And so the spirit coming into the church. Now you see the promise of Jesus as, you know, the spirit Pentecost comes down on each of them. Now that looks good. That's the story. But what does it do? What difference does it make? What difference? Does it make a difference? Or is it just a beautiful picture? Well, St. Paul in his, letter, in, his, excuse me, in his letter to the Galatians, says it does make a difference. It does make a difference. 
And it shows up in the way that we live and the way we act. It's the way the Christians try to live, the way that you and I would like to try to live. And so I'll show you this third slide, which is called the fruit of the Holy Spirit, or that we usually use the word, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to have the Holy Spirit? How do we live it out? How does our life show the resilience to evil, to hardship, to people in trouble? And so when you look at the list, I wrote down there the list. And I'm just going to go, I read the list once. Okay, you don't mind if I read, please, huh? It says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, uh, what is this now? Gentleness. Faithfulness, gentleness, and then uh, last of all, self-control. Let's take a moment. These are some people who are resilient, live in the spirit. How about you? Love means forgiveness. Love means taking care of others, even when they give us a hard time. Love means trying to live at peace with others. Not always easy. I mean, it's not always easy. Sometimes the best we can do is pray for the other person and pray for ourselves. That's the best we can do. But notice that that's the very first one, huh? Remember what Jesus said, the new commandment I give you? Love one another as I have loved you. It's John's Gospel, I believe, chapter 15. So the very first sign that we're God's people is that we have the gift of love. And then after love, what did it have next there? And after love, it had patience. Oh, my goodness. Are you impatient to your children, to your wife, to your husband? Can you cool down? Patience doesn't mean aharana. In fact, good patience has to do with prayer and reaching out. How do I help a child who isn't doing his homework or her homework? How do I help a wife who's depressed by the lack of food in the house? So patience means to bear with, carry on with another person. The next one that shows up after that is kindness. Uh, that's really important. Resilience comes out of kindness. I, I can be strong because the people around me make me strong. The secretary who under great pressure always hears a cheerful good morning from the boss. The friend in the office who's sitting there who just had sickness in the family and you come and say, good morning, how are you? How are things today? That's kindness. It's kindness. It's taking care of others where they are, what they need. And then I have after that, after kindness is generosity. Well, I mentioned that. Please, as you can, share, what do they call it? Time, treasure, or talents. People are hungry. You have food you don't need, try to give it away. You have things that even you can give up a little, give it away. Give things to share with others. Be generous. But generosity is not just things. It's a generosity of spirit. Checking on a, a friend who's in the hospital. A telephone call. I, I find myself making calls and uh, videos, uh, going on Viber, just to see how people are. One friend is just lying in bed. That's all she can do. She's not crippled, but her muscles don't move anymore. But her spirit is very good. She likes to talk. So we talk. So that, that's generosity. And then I have after generosity, 
I have what is happening here now? What sex? Faithfulness. The faithfulness. Yeah. Faithfulness means holding on. Holding on. He was my faithful friend, even when I was in a tough spot. That helps resilience because people are there to support you. You can be resilient, not just of your own power, because people are picking you up. So that, that's why I have each of these. Okay, after faithfulness is, what's next there? Gentleness, Father. Ah, gentleness, yeah. <laughs> As I guess, yeah. Well, for sure, be gentle. I have a problem with a friend. And even when I'm angry, I just have to be very, very gentle. Many times people who have problems don't know it. So gentleness. And then last of all, it says self-control. Yeah. Control of yourself. Being in personal control of your own life situation. Now, these are all the gifts of the spirit, the fruits. These are signs that you're there. Resilience is a very important thing, but to be honest, it's not just a personal thing. People are resilient because other people pick them up. So today, my thought, my challenge will be, who are you helping? Who are you picking up? Who are you helping to be resilient? The doctors, the nurses, they help people with COVID and pneumonia to be resilient by giving them medicine, the oxygen. The parent helps a child doing poorly in school to be resilient by helping them with the homework, encouraging them to do better. Resilience comes because people in the office say, how are you? We can help you out. Do you want to talk about it? So resilience comes not of itself. It very often comes because people are picking it up. I will end with what Jesus said. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning verse 1, at the Last Supper, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. Let's pray quietly for a few more moments now. What do we want to say? To the Lord. What do we need to be resilient? What do we need? What do we need from the Lord to take care of others that they may be resilient in a very difficult time in the world? I'd like to end our, I'd like to make the prayer for generosity. Because generosity is what picks people up. So I'll pray, and if you know the words, pray with me. If not, pray after me. We'll go slow. So, dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heal the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for any reward. Except that I know that I do your most holy will. I pray that the Lord will give you a personal resilience in this difficult time. But maybe a little more today, a prayer that you may support others so that they may be resilient in their difficulties. 
So may the Lord's blessing be upon all of you, the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before anything else, Father, uh, thank you so much for this morning reflection. On a personal note, uh, last night we were on the phone, remember, and I and I, we were talking about resilience, tenacity. And when you asked me uh, what can be a focus point, I mentioned that we all know the pandemic. There's a, there's a there's there are new variants in the pandemic. In the news, things are getting. Uh, scarier right? more terrifying and and we need to be resilient and need to be strong so all the while resilience for me was a personal thing on a personal level i am yes i feel anxious i feel scared and i asked you for guidance on how to be more positive how to be stronger but one aspect you showed me now which i did not think of before was that resilient resilience is a collective thing you can't be resilient on your own. And uh, right off the bat, I realized that I think I made it this far because God sent people my way to make his love felt to me. Family, friends who helped me out. And right away mm -hmm. while you were talking, I thought of a relative who I know right now is struggling, who I know has trouble putting food on the table. And I feel challenged. No, How can I help my relative be more resilient. Maybe there's something I can do for those who are in need. And thank you, Father Bill, for helping me realize that, that you know, we cannot be resilient on our own. Uh, God sends people our way to make his love felt, and we too need to be vessels of God's love to those in need. So thank you for that, Father Bill. Good. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that reminder. Thank you so much, Shadow. Thank you. And uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, my companion here, Mr. Jonathan Santiago. He's from the Construction Development Unit. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Good morning, Father Bill. Good morning, um, Jonathan. Uh, I think Father Bill discussed every aspect of resiliency perfectly already. And uh, realization lang is yun nga yung sinabi rin ni Sir Jello na being resilient doesn't involve only yourself na it it has something to do with helping others also. Parang yun yung realization ko today na you don't have to fight on your own and if you're nakataas kesa sa iba na meron ka opportunity or kakayahan na to help others it is part of res resiliency also. Good. Thank you, and Jonathan. Then, yes. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, and then yung yeah. sa ano naman, resiliency of us Filipinos. Uh, just to add up, uh, I think it comes with ano rin kasi, with us being a third world country. Tapos yung location natin na more, to, more exposed to natural disasters like typhoons, like uh, others, earthquake, ganyan, etc. Tapos yung economical state ng country natin is we cannot compare it to the first world countries na they have the benefits of yung healthcare nila mas okay, yung available help sa all residents of the country is kumbaga ano lagi, andyan lagi sila. And compared to us, talagang we have to rely on ourselves and to the community to help each other para Kaya naging ano na natin yun eh, parang natural characteristics as Filipinos, yung being resilient talaga. Yun ba? Thank you so much, uh, Sir Jonathan. No? And you know, I think this, uh, this in, all of us here enjoy nostalgia. We're, as like what Father said, we're very blessed to be employed uh, by a company who looks after us, who, who continues to hold us despite the economic situation. And I think with, with that, much of a blessing we are all the more called to go out uh, to reach out to people who are not as fortunate as we are no so maybe uh even in the own in our own office a simple good morning how are you kindness can go a long way to help our friends be more resilient and so i thank you uh, jonathan for being with us this morning and of course you too father bill uh your talk is very timely 
uh, it hits home. And uh, thank you for reminding us that, yes, we need to be resilient, but can, it can only be done with prayer and if we reach out to those in need, even our colleagues at the workplace. So thank you, Father Bill. Okay. God bless you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, Father Bill. Take care. And to our participants, uh, to our participants here, I will send a uh, attendance sheet that which you could all fill up before you log out. So once again, uh, thanks everyone. Take care and have a wonderful day ahead. Thanks, Father Bill. Jello, yeah, Jello. Please be sure to send them the uh, send out. Okay, let them okay. have a proof of the spirit. Uh, please, okay. Okay, Father. All right, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye.